In this Helium 10 keyword research tutorial, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step the easiest, fastest, and best way to do keyword research in Helium 10 for your Amazon products. So we're gonna start off by using Cerebro. Now Cerebro is the most powerful keyword research tool in Helium 10. It looks quite complicated, but it's actually really, really simple to use. So let me just briefly explain what it is, and I'll show you the best way to use it. So Cerebro is what is called a reverse ASIN tool. So ASIN is basically a unique identifier for any product on Amazon. So by doing this reverse ASIN lookup, what we're doing is we're taking existing top sellers on Amazon and looking at what keywords that they are using. So if these listings are performing really well on Amazon and we look at the search terms that they're using, they're targeting and we do the same, we can expect very positive results. So the easiest way to do this is go to Amazon first, look at the niche that you want to analyze. So we're gonna take a look at the chopping board niche in this example. Now you can manually copy over each ASIN one at a time. That's gonna take ages and it's no fun doing that. The easiest thing to do is to fire up X-Ray from Helium 10, which I'm sure you guys have used to find the product in the first place. And then what we do is we filter out the sponsored products as we don't really care what the sponsored listings are targeting as they're not ranking very well or we don't know if they're ranking very well. We only care about the products are ranked well organically because if they're ranked well organically, they are clearly doing something right. So we go to the filters first and make sure that we've got hired sponsored products from results ticked so that we don't see them in the search results. Then the next thing we do is we need to select 10 of these products. Now I recommend just going for the top 10 but if you see any products in this top 10 that you don't think are super relevant or you don't want to analyze, it's absolutely fine to skip over one of those. So we tick these and as you tick them, it will start counting up at the top and the Cerebro max is 10. So we don't want to go above that. So eight, nine, 10, you can see here we've got 10 selected and then you click the run Cerebro button and that will bring you straight back through to the screen I showed you earlier with all of those ASINs, which is a unique identifier from Amazon for these individual products. It brings them all through, and then we're gonna analyze these 10 products. So let's click on the Get Keywords button. It will take a few seconds to do that, and then at the bottom, it's gonna output all of the keywords it was able to find by looking at those 10 products. And you can see we have 2,288 keywords, which is far too many to work with. Now we have lots of different filters here and if you're new to Cerebro and you're new to Amazon, this is quite imposing, but it's actually really, really simple and we're just gonna be looking at the ones that I've highlighted in yellow. So we've got the search volume, the number of competitors and the competitor rank and let me explain. By the way, this is the exact method that I teach in my course and to the people that I mentor as well. So this is what I use for my own product. This is the best technique. This isn't just something I've made up for YouTube. This is the exact technique I use for my own products, for mentees and in my course. So the first one, search volume. As we've got over 2000 keywords, we wanna get rid of a lot of the noise. You're not gonna stuff your listing with 2000 keywords. It's just not realistic. So we wanna find the search terms that are most relevant, which hopefully we've already done by analyzing 10 of the best selling products, but also the ones with a decent search volume so that if you rank for those keywords, there's plenty of traffic there for customers to find you each month. So I always put in a minimum search volume. Now this will vary from niche to niche and you might need to adjust this up or down depending on how many search results come back. As a starting point, I start with something like 200, but this might drop down to 100 if it's a low traffic niche, or it could go up to three or 400 if it's a high traffic niche. We then have these two filters here, which is number of competitors and competitor rank. And what we're gonna do here is out of those 10 products that we're analyzing, we can't guarantee that all 10 of them know exactly what they're doing. Maybe someone's got lucky, or maybe one of them has done some good keyword research, but also some terrible keyword research, and they've included lots of search terms that will be of no interest to you. So if we put in some filters that mean that these particular search terms have to be used by a certain number of those listings and in a certain position, that helps ensure we get the best quality search terms. So if we start with the number of competitors, now you can put this at two or three. Um, I'm gonna put this at three to begin with. So out of the 10 products that we are analyzing, I want at least three of these products to have included this search term in their listing. And then we have the competitor rank. So this is where those three products individually must be ranking in the search results. So we only wanna see keywords 
that are in maybe the top 20 organic position. Now I'm not interested in any of the search terms where these guys are ranking super low. So if they're down in like position 200, I'm not really fussed about that search term. So by using these filters, we know that any search term that comes back, at least three of these products, or at least three of these sellers are indexed for those search term, and they are indexed in the top 20 organic results. So this will help filter this list down massively. So if we now click the apply filter button, let's see what we go down to. We go down from over 2,228, I think it was, to 38 which is actually quite a good number to work with. If you end up at say maybe 10, you might need to slacken off those filters. And if you're maybe above 100, you might need to tighten them up a little bit. There isn't a kind of fixed rule for this. You kind of feel your way through it when you're looking at these search terms, how relevant they are. And if you feel that they are lacking or if you feel you need more, or maybe you've got too many. But as a general rule, 10 is probably too few and above 100 is probably too many. Now at this point, you could start tweaking the other filters, but once I get under 100, I go into manual mode. What does that mean? I start going through these search results and deciding myself whether I want to target these search terms. So let's just do this very quickly as we've only got 38. Chopping board, chopping boards, plural. That's annoying with the pop-up. Cutting boards, kitchen chopping board, chopping boards for kitchen. Cutting boards, dishwasher safe chopping board. Now if you had a chopping board that wasn't dishwasher safe, just because there is search volume for that doesn't mean you have to target it. So if my dish, if my chopping board wasn't dishwasher safe, I would exclude that as the last thing I want is a customer to find it, buy my product, put it in the dishwasher, find out it's not dishwasher safe, and then get a negative review. Uh, silicon chopping board, and the same with this. If you're selling a wooden or a glass chopping board, you don't have to target silicon. This is where a lot of sellers get trapped. They try to target everything. We want to target relevant traffic got cutting board. Now cutting board is interesting as it might be a chopping board, but maybe it's for other, maybe for arts and crafts as well. So if you do come across a search term like this, we are not sure on the relevancy. You can either hover over it and it will pop up the images like I just showed you. Or if you click that little arrow, it will open it up in the search results. And if you ignore the sponsored listings and just focus on the organic, if they're chopping board, you know it is relevant. But quite often when you do that, um, for example, if we look at breadboards, we can clearly see by looking at breadboards that depending on what you're selling, you may not be a good fit for this niche as most of these appear to be wooden chopping boards. So maybe trying to sell a glass chopping board as a breadboard wouldn't be a good choice. So let's just go back to Cerebro. So as you come down, if you do see any, for example, like that breadboards, you think maybe is borderline, you can either leave it in, it's not a big issue if you do, or you can just press delete and that will exclude it from the list. And that's it, you just go down through this list bit by bit and anything that you think isn't super relevant, you exclude that. And it won't take you very long. You can do this whole task within five to 10 minutes, and then you know you've got some really, really good search terms to look at. And the final thing you wanna do is look at the search volume. So don't sort by search volume initially, do your filtering first, and then we sort them by search volume with the highest at the top, because these are probably, if they're still in your list at this point, these are probably gonna be the ones that you're gonna to wanna to prioritize. So chopping board and chopping board set, these would be the ones that you're including in your title. And as we get a bit further down, these ones here, which have a slightly lower volume, you'd maybe include some of these in your title if possible. If not, you'd push those into the bullet points. And then any ones that are remaining further down, you then push these into your description, but also your A plus content, because eventually your description gets replaced by your A plus content. So that's how, how I would approach it when integrating these based on search volume. Now, once you've got your list of keywords, you're gonna to wanna to add them to a list so they're there for you to refer back to at a later date. So to do this, on the left-hand side, tick this box here, and it says 37 keywords selected. Now, if you've got more than 50, it's only gonna select the first page. So scroll down to the very bottom. You probably can't see it, so let me just turn the webcam off a second. Down here, it says 50, but you can change this up to 150. So if you've got a lot more keywords, make sure you set that to 100 or 150, then come back up and then tick this box so that all of those search terms are selected. And then you can add them to your list by clicking on the add to my list button. It's gonna ask you to create a folder first. So we're gonna call this, let's call this chopping board keywords and then choose save. And then you've got the folder there, click on the folder and hopefully, yeah, there we go. 30, you can't see it, I'm just scroll up quickly. 37 keywords added to the folder chopping board. And if you ever wanna find that, all you need to do in Cerebro is go to, if I can find it here, tools, 
and we go to keyword research and my list keywords and hopefully the ones I've just added there we go, chopping board keywords, there's 37 keywords. So that is how you do your keyword research in Cerebro. I'm just gonna show you one more tool called Magnet, which is a nice complimentary tool to use with Cerebro. But Cerebro is by far my favorite. It works in a very similar way, but just very quickly, there are links or there are discount code links to Helium 10 in the pinned top comment and in the description. And those links will always load the latest Helium 10 offer as Helium 10 chains their offers pretty much every single month. But those links will always load the latest offer, whatever that happens to be at that particular time. So Magnet, instead of doing a reverse ASIN and analyzing the existing products, this looks at Helium 10's own database of related keywords. So if I put chopping boards, in here, you'll see that it looks quite similar and works in a very similar way to Cerebro, but it's pulling from Helium 10's own database rather than analyzing the existing products that are already on Amazon via Cerebro and the reverse ASIN method that we just spoke about. Now, what you often find with Magnet is it returns a lot more keywords and many of them aren't as relevant. That's why Cerebro is my favorite go-to tool. So you've got 4,634 keywords and just on a quick glance before we filter them, look, vape guard or vape hoard, tighter chef, commercial kitchen. So it's pulling through brands and it's also pulling through individual words. So we're gonna apply a couple of filters. We're gonna do the minimum search volume again. So I'm gonna put this at 200 again, but you might find with Magnet, you need to go higher to really exclude a lot of the noise you're gonna see in these results. And another thing you can do here is on the word count is putting a minimum. So if we put a minimum of two, that should exclude a lot of the single worded brands and also things like kitchen and commercial, which you saw there, which aren't overly helpful. So let's choose apply filters and see how much this filters the list. So we're down to 179 filtered keywords. So we're not quite at the point where you'd wanna go manual. Well, you could do, you could probably do this in 15, 20 minutes. So potentially you could do that. If not, I would probably just bump the search volume again. Let's bump that up to 300 get rid of a bit more of the noise, down to 131. But the goal really of doubling us up with Cerebro is with Magnet is just making sure you really haven't missed one of those high volume relevant keywords that somehow the other 10 products have missed. So now we're down to 100 keywords. And at this point, you can start going through this to see which ones are relevant or not. And you're gonna do a lot more deleting with this process. So for example, kitchen accessories, I mean, that's borderline, that might be something you do include in your description or A plus content, but it certainly wouldn't be one of the priority keywords in your title or your bullet points. Stainless steel, I would delete that. There's nothing to do with the chopping board that I'd be selling. Uh, these ones look okay. Anything for a branding, you'd delete it. So you just keep going through the list and looking for any of the search terms that aren't relevant. And then when you're done, you can do exactly the same thing. You can add this to the same keyword list and Helium 10 will automatically remove any duplicate. So, I would do a lot more manual vetting first before doing this normally, but let's take these keywords, add to my list. So you can see what I was talking about earlier, only 48 keywords have been selected, despite the fact there are 100 keywords. So if we go back down to that bottom right-hand corner, hide the webcam again so you guys can see, put that up to 150. So all of those keywords are visible. Scroll back up to the top. Then when we tick this box, all 98 are selected. Let's pop the webcam back on there, add them to my list. The folders there with the existing 37 keywords. So if we're adding 98, if the duplicates weren't removed, that's gonna be 135 total, but let's see what happens. So 98 keywords added to the list. Let's go back to the keyword manager over here. Give this a refresh from 37 to 111 keywords. So you can see that has automatically taken out any of the duplicates, but because I didn't manually vet those, you can see you've got things like mineral oil and non-slip mat and stuff like that that would normally be excluded if you've done a manual vetting process. So that is how you do keyword research using Helium 10. Start with Cerebro, it's by far the superior tool. Top it off with Magnet. You may only have five or 10 keywords to add to your original list, not like the example. In this video, we've added 100 keywords to that list. And like I say, there are discount links to Helium 10 in the pinned top comment and in the description, and they'll always load the latest Helium 10 offer that is on at this time. Now, if you've already got Helium 10, but you haven't found your first product yet, I've got another step-by-step -step tutorial that will show you how to use Helium 10 to find your first Amazon product. So I'm gonna pop up that tutorial now and I'll see you guys over there. Mm -hmm.